Atlantis and now. The depth and width and length of this ditch were incredible and gave the impression that such a work, in addition to so many other works, could hardly have been wrought by the hand of man. But I must say what I have heard. It was excavated to the depth of a hundred feet, and its breadth was a stadium everywhere. It was carried round the whole of the plain, and was ten thousand stadia in length. Extract from Plato's Timaeus Atlantis had been the capital of a civilization of human beings for hundreds of generations before its fateful destruction some twelve thousand years ago. Evidence for a previous civilization can be found in every continent today, with pyramids now being found in the Far East. The pyramids in Egypt, South and Middle America are well known, but still how and why they were built remain a mystery to most. The best theory on how, that I have heard, is the poured concrete theory, and rock melting with huge lens. However, it was done. It is a fact that it was done. The Giza pyramids were designed to last, as were some of the buildings in Tiwanaka, having huge 100-ton granite blocks interlocking as though they had been worked like plasticine. And Atlantis now has surfaced from myth to almost certain fact, having long since reputed to have sunk, the opposite happened, although after it was destroyed by an earthquake and a huge tsunami. In the far west of the Sahara Desert, in the country Mauritania, can be seen, even from space, the remnants of Atlantis, fitting the description given to us by Plato, even its exact size and the presence of salt and fresh water beneath it. West Africa must and could have risen by some 1,300 feet in the last 12,000 years, Back then, the map would have looked like this. 12,000 years ago, Atlantis was destroyed, and along with it the human civilization that had prospered for so long was not quite annihilated, but certainly knocked back to the drawing board. Geological evidence for this planet-wide disruption shows 12,000 years ago abrupt changes in temperature, going into an ice age at 12,500 years ago, then suddenly coming out of one 11,500 years ago, known as the Younger Dryas period. So there was an advanced human civilization on Earth over 12,000 years ago. Their infrastructure had broken, many died, but not all. The best of the stragglers who had held on to the ideas of civilization came to emerge from the deltas in the Persian Gulf to begin our history books, the Sumerians. They had retained knowledge on their way of building, they had writing, and they knew how to organize, and that they needed to trade. Today, we are in a similar situation to the Atlanteans after they had begun to falter in their ways. Any time now we could plunge into an ice age that lasts a thousand years. Billions of people could be forced to move to escape freezing temperatures. With an already bursting at the seams living conditions, pandemonium would almost certainly break out. Plato said that the Atlanteans had been tampering in a new evil. Was this DNA manipulation? And is there evidence for this? Yes. The evidence is in the Bible, in the first couple of chapters. The Garden of Eden matches the description of the center circle of Atlantis. There only the gods lived. 
After the eviction of Adam and Eve, they had two children, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel and was banished by God. When Cain complained, God helped him out by giving him a mark that anyone he met would see and they would know that anything they did to him, they would get it back seven times stronger. It is my belief that this mark was green eyes and therefore would have involved a DNA change, hence blood type differs for eye colour. Then it was done again when Lamech took two wives for himself. This time the karma strength was seven times seven, forty-nine times, and the eye colour this time was blue. But there was an added drawback. Their ability to get wealth from the ground, grow food, was diminished. They had to rely on doing other things like building or fighting to get by. Green-eyed people would perhaps be liked by others for their charm, but unwelcome for their effect on crops. The blue-eyed could not be tolerated. Problem was, if you killed one, 49 of your own would die. So they were shipped off to an island between Sweden and Finland called Gotland. There they stayed but slowly grew and developed until unleashed by seafaring 1200 years ago. Vikings. Look at the state of our crops dependent on fertilizers and pesticides. Look at the state of our planet. It is thought by some, and I am one, that every 12,000 years our sun goes through a cleansing process. The nuclear fusion that goes on deep inside the sun is creating heavier and heavier elements. Every 12,000 years the sun does a big burp to eject them. It's called a micronova. When it happens the sun from earth will look like this. it will be much darker and will dramatically reduce the heat and light it gives until the dust clears. We have evidence for this sort of cataclysm 12,000, 24,000, 36,000, 48,000 and 60,000 years ago. Also, all those cave paintings of these micronova swirls. Well, if you were a caveman and you saw the sun like that, what would you do? We can't and shouldn't even try to do anything about the sun, but we can try to control population growth. I propose that every blue-eyed person be allowed half a child. Every green-eyed person be allowed one child. And every brown-eyed person be allowed two children. Obviously, it takes two to make a child, so two blue-eyed people would be allowed one child. Two green-eyed people could have two children, and two brown-eyed people could have four children. It would have to be done like an honesty box. You can't enforce it. Thank you.